During one of the darkest periods in the history of America, the slave trade era, a remarkable man named Nat Turner was born. He would go on to lead a historic rebellion against white slave masters, causing massive slave resistance in America and across the world. His actions were deemed necessary at the time because of the widespread, inhumane treatment given to black people. His rebellion, which is still remembered to this day, led to societal chaos, uncertainty, and crises in the white community up until the Civil War. Born on the 2nd of October, 1800, in Southampton County, Virginia, USA, Nat Turner's mission kickstarted a powerful movement, inspiring black men and women to resist the horrors of slavery in America. This tale isn't just about rebelling against slave masters, it's a deep dive into the life of Nat Turner and the intricate web of violence, prophecy, and mystery surrounding his rebellious plan. These elements swirled together to form the backdrop of his audacious goal for freedom and justice. Welcome back to another exciting episode of People's Journals. Today, we go back in time to explore the incredible historical story of Nat Turner. We won't just stop at the basics, we'll explore his life, his origins, how he masterminded a rebellion against oppressive white slave masters, and even what happened after his rebellion. In this episode, we're peeling back the layers of a plot that goes down in history as one of the most audacious rebellions ever. Before we dive headfirst into this gripping story, don't forget to show us some support. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell. That way, you won't miss out on any of our future captivating content. Let's get started. Nat Turner's story begins on a Virginia plantation owned by Benjamin Turner, where he got the name Turner. His mom was a woman named Nancy, who was also enslaved. Here's the thing. We don't know who his father was, as he was never mentioned. His identity is one of those mysteries around this tale that history hasn't entirely unraveled. Benjamin permitted young Nat to learn how to read, write, and practice religion. He displayed an exceptional level of intelligence, and his religious grandmother played a vital role in fostering his spiritual growth. Because of all this, Turner became a devoted Christian. He spent a ton of his free time reading the Bible, praying, and fasting. It was like he was on a spiritual journey. Nat had an unfathomable amount of knowledge. He could describe events that happened before his birth. He also conducted preachings for the fellow enslaved people. Due to that, some believed he was God-sent, and he would grow up to become a prophet. Regardless, life wasn't easy for Nat. He was sold three times during his childhood. In 1821, just like his father, when he reached the age of 21, Nat escaped from the plantation of the brother of his former owner, Samuel Turner. Samuel Turner sent a search party to find him, but he hid in the woods for weeks. Surprisingly, to both his fellow enslaved individuals and his slave master, Nat returned to the plantation. According to him, he only returned because he got a sign from God to return. Here's the twist in the story. After Samuel Turner passed away, Nat had new owners, first Thomas Moore, and then Thomas's widow. Things took another turn when the widow, Mrs. Moore, married John Travis. That's when Nat found himself working on Travis's land. At this point, life was anything but steady for him. As time passed, Nat grew up to be a remarkable young man. Unlike other men, Nat became a passionate preacher, and he was also called a prophet. Moving on, he started leading the enslaved Africans on Benjamin Turner's plantation and in the neighborhood of Southampton County. Why? because he genuinely believed that God chose him to guide them out of the terrible and demeaning life they had in bondage. While the awful and oppressive motive behind slavery was enough reason for this rebellion, Turner's motivation was fueled by his belief that God was guiding him toward a divine mission to rebel against enslavers in Southampton. In 1825, Nat had a vision, which he described as a direct message from God. In that vision, he foresaw a violent and deadly conflict between black and white people in Southampton County. At that moment, he believed he had received confirmation from God to prepare for the freedom he was determined to secure for his people. Three years later, he got another message from God through a vision, telling him to lead the conflict he foresaw against the devilish slave owners. It also stated that there would be a sign to reveal the moment of action. Following this message, Nat began preparations and involved four of his most trusted comrades, Henry, 
Hark, Nelson, and Sam. These men shared their beliefs and desire for freedom. While they knew this conspiracy could lead to their deaths, they plotted secretly, and none of them betrayed the plan. These men formulated a strategic plan based on Turner's vision of a violent conflict, and they took extra precautions to ensure it stayed hidden. They knew that secrecy was their best defense against the slave masters, because previous attempts by others to lead an insurrection had always been discovered before they could rebel. In February 1831, Turner received the sign he had been waiting for. This sign marked the moment for their attack. The sign wasn't some mystical sign, but a good old solar eclipse. When Turner witnessed the solar eclipse, he understood that the time for action was drawing near. Originally, Nat and his comrades planned to attack on Independence Day, the 4th of July, but they had to delay their plans because he fell sick. On the 13th of August, another sign appeared as an unusual weather disturbance, with the sky turning greenish. Turner interpreted this as a sign from God to lead the rebellion against the white slave owners. After Nat and his comrades concluded a plan to attack the white slave owners across Southampton County, they decided to invite more black people, both free and enslaved, to join their cause. These individuals joined their cause after learning about their plan and witnessing their dedication and hard work toward the freedom of black people across Southampton. Their plan involved using traditional war tactics to target white individuals, including women and children, without discrimination. Their objective was to gather enough strength to defend themselves if the white community chose to retaliate. While doubts kept running through the people's minds, their plan was already in motion. Yet, the initial conspirators were so confident their plan would work out. On the 20th of August, Turner and two of his comrades, Henry and Hark, suggested having a feast to honor the men who had agreed to join their rebellion. The feast took place on the 21st of August, the day they planned to strike. Afterward, they all headed to Travis's farm. Later that night, the men launched a surprise attack on the Travis family and the others living on the farm. Because they attacked without warning, the people on the farm had no chance to escape or defend themselves against this small force. They ended up killing every member of the Travis family and the others who were staying on the farm, and they also took weapons and horses with them. Throughout that night, the rebels launched attacks on three different houses, resulting in the deaths of nearly 10 white people, including an infant they met at Travis's plantation. They took to their horses and spread terror all over the county. As they advanced further into the county, the rebels recruited more enslaved men and women whom they knew and trusted. They recruited a man named Austin, who lived and worked on the same plantation as Turner. Initially, he wasn't part of their plans, and he wasn't even invited to the feast either. Yet, as they stormed Travis's farm, Austin joined them and followed them into the town. While some individuals readily joined the rebellion, others were reluctant and a few outright refused, both among the enslaved and the free people. The rebels were taken aback because they had assumed it would be an easy decision, especially for the enslaved people. Turner and his comrades recruited approximately 75 other black individuals, including enslaved and free people. Turner's initial plan was to take control of the town of Jerusalem, which is now known as Cortland in Southampton. He aimed to obtain more weapons from the armory located there. At dawn on Monday, the 22nd of August, they altered their attack mode by moving faster and more fearless. Before that, they had been moving quietly and cautiously during their attacks. When they reached Elizabeth Turner's household, Austin, one of the newly recruited rebels, shot Hartwell Peebles. This marked the first time any black man killed a white person with a gun. After this, the rebels divided into two groups. One group rode on horses, while the others continued on foot. The reason for this separation was to keep their attacks unpredictable. The group riding horses moved faster and louder, spreading chaos and fear throughout the county. Meanwhile, the group traveling on foot launched quieter, stealthy attacks on the panicked residents. The white people were terrified as they couldn't anticipate the rebels' movements. Surprisingly, they spared the lives of some white people during the course of their attack. Yet, despite their increasing attack success in the county, they struggled to recruit more enslaved people to join their cause. At one plantation, they encountered 27 enslaved men and women, but only one chose to join the rebellion. 
The rest of the enslaved resisted the rebels and prevented them from killing their master, Harriet Whitehead. At another plantation, which was even bigger in landmass than the ones they had previously attacked, all the enslaved people there refused to join the rebellion. That made Turner question his mission. He had this big idea of building a powerful army to take on the slave masters, but things weren't going as planned. Despite the refusal of these enslaved individuals, the rebel group remained a formidable force not to be underestimated. Little did the rebels know, word of their attacks had already spread all across the country. This put the white people on high alert. Some took refuge in the woods, while others got ready to defend themselves. This became a significant problem for Nat because, without any recruits joining them, things were getting tough. One of the most heart-wrenching consequences of their raid was when the rebels targeted a farm where a family lived with ten innocent children. Tragically, they took the lives of everyone on that farm, including the children. This family had hidden these children there, hoping to shield them from the violence of the attack. Later that day, every other white person in the area had armed themselves to protect against the rebels. White men formed groups and started tracking the rebels as they headed toward Jerusalem. They were hot on their trail, armed with all sorts of weapons, determined to end the rebellion. These groups of white men were led by a man named Alexander Petey. As the rebels got closer to Jerusalem, they tried again to recruit more black men. The white men caught up to the rebels, and a fierce battle ensued. Surprisingly, the rebels emerged victorious, driving the white men away from the area. However, upon hearing the commotion, additional groups of white men converged on the battlefield. This time, they overwhelmed the rebels, and Turner's men fled in different directions, scattering in the chaos. The rebels regrouped after their defeat and set up camp at a nearby plantation. By then, they had lost over 30 men in the battle. Yet, the white people kept hunting them relentlessly, eventually discovering trails leading to their camp. When the rebels sensed that they were closing in, they scattered once more. Turner couldn't locate any of them, so he found a hiding place to stay safe. The remaining rebels split into several smaller groups, but the white men were relentless in their pursuit. Some insurgents escaped and vanished without a trace, while others were captured. On the 23rd of August, the rebellion came to an end. The captured rebels were brought to Jerusalem for trial. Many white people, especially those who had sought refuge during the uprising, gathered in Jerusalem to witness the execution of the rebels. Sadly, this event took a dark turn resulting in a tragic incident where around 200 black people lost their lives. White people brutally killed dozens of black people in Southampton County and across Virginia without legal proceedings. The troubles didn't end there. In the weeks following Nat Turner's rebellion, life became even more challenging for black people. The white residents of Southampton County posed a severe threat to every black person living there. They didn't hesitate to kill any enslaved person they suspected of being connected to the rebellion. Tragically, this included numerous innocent men and women. The leader of the state militia force had to issue a restraining order to end these brutal killings on the 28th of August, 1831. This order explicitly stated that white people should refrain from harming or killing enslaved individuals. Failure to comply with this restraining order would result in severe legal consequences. Thankfully, this order played a crucial role in ending the indiscriminate violence against black people. For about two months, there was an extensive manhunt to capture Turner. During this time, the rebels who had been arrested were executed. One night, two black men stumbled upon Turner in his hiding spot. He begged them to keep it a secret, but they refused and informed the white authorities. Turner got wind of this and fled, but he was eventually captured on the 30th of October, 1831, by Benjamin Phipps. Benjamin brought Nat to Jerusalem to face trial. During the trial, Turner was responsive and pleaded not guilty as he claimed a divine purpose from God guided his actions. While in jail, awaiting trial, Turner confided his confession to his lawyer. Subsequently, on the 11th of November, he was executed by hanging for his role in leading what was considered a rebellion, resulting in numerous deaths. New laws were made that stopped black people from getting an education moving around, or even meeting up with each other. The pro-slavery and anti-abolitionist beliefs in that area got more robust because of this rebellion. These beliefs hung around until the American Civil War, 
which happened between 1861 and 1865. Throughout the history books, Nat Turner's rebellion has been deemed a vital aspect of the cultural landscape in America. Even after his death, Nat Turner's influence endured. His rebellion marked the initial spark that ignited resistance among enslaved individuals in the United States. His profound impact on society cannot be underestimated. In 1967, novelist William Styron penned a best-selling novel inspired by Nat Turner's confession, which brought the rebellion to a broader audience. The book received numerous accolades, including the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. That wraps up today's video. Once more, we appreciate you tuning in. Remember to give this video a thumbs up by clicking on the like button on the video. We'd also like you to hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified whenever we release more video contents like this.